Walter, W-A-L-T-E-R, Chick, C-H-I-C-K, McGill, M-C, capital G-I-L-L. My title is pastor, not reverend. All right. Okay, so can you tell me what you're doing in Amarillo here today on the side of uh, Loop 335? Uh, it's about noon on Monday. Okay, today, this is day number two of a special prayer walk around Amarillo uh, as I pray for a special blessing upon the community. There will be three full days of walking around the loop. I've already walked across Amarillo, 12.2 miles. This uh, loop walk will be about 40 miles. All right. And this is actually part of a much larger project, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Uh, I started from Hill Hills, North Carolina, on a national prayer walk, coast to coast, um, promoting a new birth of freedom and integrity in America, calling attention to the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, and our nation's founding documents. So this, this part of the Amarillo Walk is actually part of a much larger project. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yes, I started a national prayer walk, or freedom walk, from Kildeville Hills, North Carolina, on April 23rd of this year, promoting a new birth of freedom and integrity in America, calling attention to the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, and our nation's founding documents. Okay, and, and so you're in Amarillo. You started in North Carolina. Do you know about how many miles that is yet? Uh, yes, it was uh, like 2,030 miles. Right so far, there. and Amarillo is not your final destination, right? Santa Monica, California is the final destination. That's about 3,200 miles total. Keep in mind, I'm 68 years old, one of the oldest to ever attempt this trek. You're doing the entire walk with this flag. That will make you the first veteran to travel by foot. Coast to coast, carrying the flag, right? Hand carrying the flag. So what's next? Uh, after you finish the walk, what, what's the next part of your, your story? Well, you know, we, we want to write a book. And uh, it's not going to be anything for our profit. I'm looking for someone who's willing to write the book and give them the profits. I just want to get the message out to the, to the, the nation. I want to make a national impact. And, and get our people thinking about uh, people more than things. You know, this time it's in Black Friday. Look at how people were trampling to get things, to get more things. People are more important than things, and we have to come to that realization. Our politics has to think of others more than corporate interests or pocketbooks or whatever. You know? Uh, Christians in this country need to leave their comfort zones. If they're going to talk the talk, they need to walk the walk. And so I'm giving a radical, radical illustration of what a Christian should be doing. All right. <clears throat> so, um... What have you thought about Amarillo so far? You know, I'm looking for a place to move from Tennessee. I really liked Oklahoma, and Texas is starting to get in my blood. Uh, Amarillo is a great place. Uh, a lot of fine people here. I've met numerous people that are very uh, supportive in terms of my walk and so forth. You know, and that's been the case throughout the Bible Belt. Uh, honestly, I think I'm leaving the Bi Bible Belt, though. There's not as much Bible Belt here, here as there was in, this, in the East, but um, still, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a, a bad thing for me to come and, and live here. I mean, you know, it's a nice place. All right. <clears throat> okay, so um, I, I'm unfamiliar with the, the organization of, of, of Christian organizations. Okay. Uh, what is you said your, your title is pastor. Yes. Does that mean that you have a, like a church, a congregation that you lead? I, I have been uh, leading a little flock of people for about 27 years. And uh, a pastor is a servant. You know, we, we are supposed to set an example. And 
so I'm not a reverend. You know, reverend is something that I attribute to God alone. Although there are ministers that are called reverends. I, I just don't resonate with that. Pastor or minister is no better than anybody else. Uh, we're just servants of the people, trying to show them a better way to live and encourage them and counsel them in that better way. Okay, and so we're, what, who's, who's, what's happening to your, your church back in Tennessee then right now? Who's, who's keeping the flock in check while you're away? Well, you know, my flock is rather scattered right now. Um, some have become missionaries in foreign countries and some have moved away. And so we don't have many people meeting there at all now. Uh, my assistant pastor even moved away. So you might say that I'm on a trek to find another congregation. Start researching on the internet. They're going to find you. There's a... Uh, uh, oh, I wanted to give you a chance to tell me kind of your story in your own words as far as like the... Uh... Traffic has increased for some reason. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, I kind of wanted before you get uh, I kind of wanted you to tell me the story about about the name and, and the controversy and, and all of that in your own words, real quick. Okay. Um, just as God told me to walk across America, God told me what name my religion should be and how I should worship. And so I took the name based upon a divine mandate, Creation Seventh-day Adventist. Now it turns out there's a religious corporation that had federally trademarked some of those words. And after 17 years of me and my flock using that name and extending our goodwill into an international field, they decided to sue us for trademark infringement. I understand their point of view from a business perspective. I cannot endorse their perspective from a spiritual angle because I believe that everybody should have the freedom to exercise their religion according to the dictates of their conscience. My conscience is very sensitive in this area. I've even done jail time over this thing. I was going to say that you believe in that principle so much that you were even willing to spend some time in, in jail uh, to use the name that you feel is rightfully, uh, that, that describes your... I'm your... willing to spend life in prison for that name because that name identifies what I am and who I am. I've noticed that when cars pass by, when you're walking, you salute them. Uh, could you tell me what that's about? Well, you know, uh, when I started this walk, I was not saluting. I got part of the way across North Carolina, and God started inspiring me about this flag. And he said, you know, you're carrying a symbol of we the people. You're carrying a symbol of respect and honor, and you need to be a little bit more respectful in the way you carry yourself. And I, and I asked him, how am I going to change it? And he said, you need to salute every motorist that passes by and show them an example of the respect that they should be showing to each other. All Americans should be showing each other respect. And it gets back to the golden rule. Doing unto others as you would want them to do unto you. So I'm a, I'm a subordinate saluting a superior, in a, in a sense. That's the military side of it. And the Bible side of it is esteeming others greater than yourself. Uh, you know, Sheriff Buford Pusser. Right. And, and uh, you know, he, he knocked out that uh, cartel, that drug cartel, and, and uh, uh, what do what, what they call that? The, the harlot. Uh, they had a whorehouse there. <laughs> and so uh, Sheriff Buford Pusser uh, wiped out that cartel, and uh, they made a movie. In fact, a series of movies, Walk and Talk. And, and we put a little uh, church in an old filling station right next to the famous White Iris Bar. White Iris? Yeah, that sounds right. White Iris Bar. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, 
And what what day was it that when did you start out? We started actually walking. We started uh, on April twenty third. It was our nineteenth wedding anniversary, actually, and uh, we we walked about one hundred forty two cross country days. I've walked. Uh, let's see. This is my second day in Amarillo extra. I walked across Knoxville, Tennessee extra, and I walked across Kansas City extra. So those are three, four extra days so far. Then tomorrow will be the fifth extra day. And I think that might cover it.